Hi, good morning. Welcome to Keen's Kids Online. Don't worry, Suzanne will be with us shortly, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to say hi and to check in with you guys. I really hope you're all doing well. I miss the fact that we can't meet up each Sunday morning. I look forward to the time we can do that again. And I look forward to hearing from you all about the things you got up to while we were away. I hope you're enjoying learning all the names of God. It's hard to believe that there is so many and we're still only in the Old Testament. Our God really is an amazing God. So let's start this morning by praying to him. So let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you that we don't need to be in the same room to learn about you together. Thank you that you are the same God that we learn about in the Bible and you never change, especially at these times when things seem to be changing around us all the time. Thank you that you're constant and your love for us is constant. Please help us as we learn more about you today. Amen. Today we're learning more about God through the story of Daniel. Daniel trusted God in all that he said and did. And at times that wasn't very easy or the simplest thing to do. Some people may have said that God shone through Daniel. And that made me think of the song we could sing, Shine. But before we sing our song, I just thought, is there ways that we could shine for Jesus this week? Is there things like helping mum with the housework? Or maybe tidying our room without even being asked? Or what about if our little brother and sister makes us mad, giving them a hug rather than wanting to hit them? Or maybe it's sharing our favourite Bible story with a friend or a relative. wonder if you can think of ways of showing or shining for Jesus this week. So here's our song, Shine. Really good talking to you. Hope you're doing really well and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Jonathan we really miss all the King's Kids leaders and we really miss all of you as well and um, yeah we're so looking forward to being able to get back sometime um, hopefully soon and see you all again but until then we'll just keep doing what we're doing and meeting online so we're back up at the caravan again and it's been raining for most of the week and um, we're just hoping that the rain goes off a wee bit and we can get out and explore this wonderful part of the world that's so beautiful and we hope that you're all well and you're enjoying your summer holidays too 
So up next is our memory verse challenge. And last week we set you the challenge to learn a verse from the book of Romans in the New Testament. And um, it was part of one of the songs that we sang last week. So we've got some friends from King's Kids now who are going to tell us the memory verse and um, show us how they got on with learning it. Okay, and we'll chat to you again afterwards. Everyone, today we will be doing this week's memory verse challenge. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Bye everyone, we miss you. Okay, so well done to um, Gabriella and Nathan um, for doing so well with your Memory Verse Challenge. And do please send us your videos. We love seeing you do your Memory Verse Challenges. And if you've got any requests for songs that you'd like to hear for King's Kids Online, or you just want to ask us a question or say hello or get in touch, just do that um, either through our Facebook page or um, you can send us a wee message too. Okay, so up now is our quick recap. Now, I did count this week because I never really know how many there have been, but I did count. And today is a very special day because we are on number 20. This will be the 20th name that we have learned about God and the 20th reason to trust God. And um, so coming up now in our quick recap, we have 19 previous things that we've learned about God. So enjoy our recap. And as always, see how many of them you can remember. Okay, can you believe it? As we said before, name number 20. And who would have thought that 20 names later we would still be meeting online, but we're so thankful as always um, for the technology that makes it able for us to do this. And always great thanks to Miles as well for putting all our bits and pieces together and helping us get King's Kids online every week. We really, really appreciate it. And we really appreciate all of you joining with us as well and tuning in for this. So I've got with me something this morning. Where did I put it? Anyone know what this is? Yeah, of course it is a shield. And we hunted all through the caravan because we knew we had one here somewhere and we managed to eventually find it. So the name for God today that we're thinking about is the Lord, my shield. And we're going to be thinking a little bit more um, after our wee video clip about why we can think of God as our shield and why it's such a good thing that God is our shield and our defender and our protector. Our story this morning, you might have guessed from some of the pictures here, is the story of Daniel. And um, we've got a wee video coming up now that tells us a bit more about the life of Daniel and what happened when Daniel and some of his friends were taken away from their country to another country and um, how it was hard for them at times during that period, but how they kept trusting in God and they kept doing the right thing. So we hope you enjoy this video clip coming up now and we will chat to you again afterwards. So part of God's story is about a guy named Daniel and it goes like this. Daniel was a Jew, which means he was part of God's special family. But when he was a young man, a king called Nebuchadnezzar, let's call him Nezer, came in from the city of Babylon and took over. He chose the smartest, strongest, most handsome Jewish men to leave their home and come work for him in his palace. One of those young men was Daniel. 
Even though most people in Babylon didn't follow God, Daniel and his friends did. So they had to figure out how to obey God and serve the king. For starters, they had to go through a training program where they were fed royal food. The problem was, King Nezer had also offered that food to idols or false gods. And since they followed God, they wanted nothing to do with idols. So Daniel had an idea. He asked the chief of the king's staff if he and his friends could eat vegetables and water for 10 days instead. If they got too weak or skinny, they'd eat something else. Well, guess what? God made them even stronger than the men who ate royal food. God gave Daniel extra understanding too. In fact, a few years later, the king had a nightmare. Nobody knew what it meant. Daniel told King Nezer that he would ask God to show him. God did. After that, King Nezer adored Daniel. He even said God was pretty great, which was a big deal because the king didn't even think about God before that. But soon, he made it hard for Daniel to follow God again. That's because the king built a huge gold statue of himself, 90 feet tall. Anybody who didn't bow down to it would be thrown into a furnace. This time, Daniel's friends were the ones in trouble. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the king, the God whom we serve is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will never worship the gold statue you've set up. So they got sent into the fire. Well, pretty soon the king looked into the furnace and noticed that there were four men and they were walking around. An angel of the Lord was protecting Daniel's friends. They got out alive and didn't even smell like smoke. God didn't stop them from getting punished, but he did go through it with them. The king had never seen a God who would rescue like that. Afterwards, King Nezer didn't mind if Daniel and his friends worshiped God, but the king still worshiped idols too. So God sent him another dream and Daniel told him what it meant. King Nezer would live in a field and eat grass like a cow for seven years. In other words, he'd go crazy until he realized that God is the only one we should worship. Kids, God doesn't want everybody to worship whoever they want. He wants everybody to worship him. Anyway, Daniel kept working for other kings of Babylon, even after King Nezer. God continued to help him understand dreams and visions. And even though he had to give a lot of bad news, Daniel did excellent work and he was really well liked by the kings. In fact, one king named Darius liked Daniel so much that others got jealous. They tried to get Daniel in trouble, but they knew the only way to do that was to make a law against God. They suggested that everybody pray only to King Darius. That made the king feel important, so he made it a law. Anybody who disobeyed would spend the night in a den of lions. Daniel kept right on praying though, and when King Darius found out, he was sad. He didn't want to punish Daniel, but now it was the law. He said, may your God whom you serve faithfully rescue you. And guess what? God did. He sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. Daniel served four important kings and he followed God. But whenever it came down to obeying God or the king, Daniel chose God every time, no matter what. And even though Daniel had to do some really hard things, God was always with him. And that's the story of Daniel. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Daniel was taken to Babylon. He asked for vegetables. God made him strong. God gave Daniel understanding. Daniel's friends obeyed God instead of the king. They got punished. God rescued them. Daniel understood more dreams. He was the king's favorite. Others got jealous. Daniel obeyed God instead of the king. He got punished. God rescued him. Daniel served God no matter what. And that's a part of God's story. Okay, hope you enjoyed that wee video. And what was so good about that video was that it gave us way more information than what we're going to be thinking about um, this morning. Because this morning we're just thinking about the part of the story where King Darius is in charge. I know that in the video it talked a lot about King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, but we're at the period of the story now where King Darius is the king. And um, Daniel is doing really well. And um, the king realizes that Daniel's a really hard worker, a really good, trustworthy worker, and he's going to put him in charge of the whole kingdom and how other people are really jealous of that. But before we begin, we've got a wee Bible verse here and it comes from Psalm 33, verse 20. And it says, we put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And of course, that's just one of the verses where we get 
the name of God being the Lord my shield. So from the I Am story book, the Lord my shield, and the story today is safe from hungry lions. And I am sure we've all heard this story before, but it's such an amazing story, such an encouragement to us. And it just shows us what a great example Daniel was, how he was brave and he lived for God, even though he knew that it wasn't going to be easy and that it could get him into trouble and into danger. He still trusted in God to be his help and his shield. So here we go from the book of Daniel chapter six. Daniel was one of the Jewish exiles in Babylon and he served the rulers of Babylon his whole life. Now, as you saw in the video clip, Daniel and um, some other men from the kingdom of um, Israel had been taken from their country and taken to Babylon. Um, so when Darius became king, he put Daniel and two other high, of, high officials in charge of all the workers who collected money for the king's treasury. So here we have the king, we have Daniel, and we have some of the other men who worked for the king. Daniel did such a good job and served with such a good spirit that Darius planned to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. And the Bible also tells us that Daniel was a man of God and that Daniel prayed to God and that Daniel loved God and trusted in God. And if he was asked to do things um, that made him uh, likely to disobey God, he wouldn't do them. We saw in the video clip how he was offered food that had previously been sacrificed to the idols that um, the Babylonians worshipped and Daniel refused to eat the food. And because he did the right thing, God looked after him and protected him. So King Darius is so impressed with Daniel that he's going to um, promote him. He's going to give him even more responsibility. But of course, there were people who were jealous of Daniel because they were thinking, well, this man's not even from our country. And look, here he is getting the power and the responsibility that we would rather have. So they came up with a really wicked plan. Let's find out. So this made the other high official jealous. They wanted to find a reason to get rid of Daniel. So they watched him carefully, but he never did anything wrong. Now, the officials knew that Daniel loved God and prayed to God in his house three times every day. So here we have Daniel praying. So they came up with a plan and they presented it to the king. Oh, king, they said, we have a good idea. Make a law that no one in the kingdom may pray to anyone but you for 30 days. And if anyone prays to someone else, he will be thrown into the den of hungry lions. So the king thinks, hmm, I quite like this idea. I quite like the idea that I would be that important and people would just pray to me. Daniel looks worried. And here we have the new law. From this day forth, no man, woman or child is to pray to any god or man except Darius, the great king. If anyone disobeys this law, they will be thrown into the den of lions. This is by order of King Darius. Die. The king was Daniel's friend, so he should have realised that his new law would hurt Daniel. But the king thought, hmm, I would quite like everyone to pray to just me for 30 days. So he made the law and he signed it and he sealed it with his special ring. Now Daniel heard about the new law, but he didn't stop praying to God because praying to God was the right thing to do. And Daniel was going to obey God and do what was right. He went to his house, he knelt by the window and he prayed to God three times every day, just as he had always done. So look, right by the window. Daniel didn't come in and hide under his bed and do it. He didn't hide behind the door and do it. He did it by his window, just as he had always done. And you know, he might have known that people might see him, but he didn't care because he loved God and he trusted God and he was going to do the right thing. But look. They have caught him on praying and the law says that you're not allowed to. What is going to happen? The other officials spied on Daniel and saw what he was doing. Then they hurried to tell the king. King Darius was worried and upset. What have I done? He said, there must be a way I can help Daniel instead of throwing him into a den of hungry lions. But even the king could not change the law once it was written. So with great sadness, the king sent for Daniel. May your God, whom you always serve, deliver you, the king said. Then the king's servants threw Daniel into the lion's den 
and they placed a stone over the top. The king went back to his palace and do you know what boys and girls? He couldn't sleep and he couldn't eat. He was so worried about Daniel. In the morning at the first light, he hurried back to the lion's den. As he got closer, he called out, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God saved you? Would Daniel answer him? Would he hear Daniel's voice? Yes, he certainly did. Oh, King, Daniel answered. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths and they have not hurt me. Wonderful, wonderful, said the king. And he ordered his servants to pull Daniel out of the lion's den right away. Then the king made a new law. Everyone in the kingdom must honour Daniel's God, for he is the living God who has saved Daniel from the empire of the lions. So from this day forth, every man, woman and child is to pray to the God that Daniel serves. He is the only living God and his kingdom will never end. He saved Daniel. This is by order of King Darius. Boys and girls, Daniel didn't know what was going to happen when he was thrown into the den of lions, but he trusted that um, he would do the right thing and that whatever happened, God is God and um, God would look after him in whatever way God saw fit. Daniel might have been thrown in the den of lions and um, the lions might have eaten him, but Daniel was still going to do what was right. So he didn't know what was going to happen, but he trusted that doing the right thing was more important than being safe. So what do we mean whenever we say that the Lord is our shield? Well, I have a shield here. Now, what is a shield for? Whenever um, people went into battle with their shields and their swords, what part of your body did your shield protect? Anyone know? You would usually hold your shield like this on your arm. Can't actually get it working. And your shield would be here in front of your body and it's protecting this part of your body usually, but you would move it around depending on where the sword was going to be. But I like to think that your shield is there to protect your heart. And when we think of God being our shield, we are putting our faith and our trust in God. And we are saying that we're going to love God first with all of our hearts and that God will help us and that he will protect us. Let's just read this little bit here. Now, it's talking about using sunscreen at the pool and at the minute up here, I can tell you we don't need sunscreen. In fact, I don't even think we've used it once since we've been here. Maybe a bit of windburn cream might be important. But if you forget to put on your sun cream when you're at the pool or the beach, you might get sunburned if you're somewhere warm and sunny. But if you have your sunscreen or a big umbrella or you've got your hat on, you can protect yourself against getting sunburned. Long ago, soldiers carried shields and um, they carried the shields in front of them to knock away arrows or to protect themselves if someone was coming at them with a sword. The Bible tells us that God has an enemy and that enemy is the same um, enemy that came to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And we call that enemy the devil or Satan. And he tries to get God's people to do the wrong thing. He tried to get Adam and Eve to do the wrong thing and they did do the wrong thing. And sometimes we do the wrong thing. But the Bible tells us that we can carry the shield of faith. Do you remember when we learned about the armour of God and the Bible says to put on the full armour of God and so we learned about the sword of the spirit and all the other bits and pieces of the armour but it talked about the shield of faith and the shield of faith can help protect us against um, the attacks of God's enemy because sometimes the devil likes to try and tempt us to do the wrong thing and to disobey God and to think more about ourselves than thinking about what God would want us to do. But God is our strength and our shield, as the song says. When we put our trust in God, we are putting our trust in the almighty creator who can and will protect and defend us. Boys and girls, there's no better place to put your faith than in God himself. And so we pray and we trust and we hope that you will trust in God as being your saviour and your Lord and your creator and your king and that he can be your shield and your defender as well. Can we just pray, boys and girls? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that you came to earth and that you died to save us. Father, God, we are so thankful for your great love for us and we are thankful for your protection. We are thankful that we can be our shield and our defender. And then when we put on the full armour of God, one of the things that we are carrying is the shield of faith to protect our hearts. Please help our hearts to love you first and love you best. And please help us, Lord God, as we learn more about you to continue to grow in our faith 
and to continue to trust in you, just like Daniel did, even when it was hard and even when he was in danger, he still put his trust in you. Please will you bless our boys and girls and their families this morning. Please keep them safe, protect them and bless them in their wee lives. And we look forward, Lord God, to the day that we can meet up again soon. And we ask all of these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Boys and girls, what happens next in our story? Well, we're at the very end of the New Testament, or sorry, the Old Testament part of this book. And, and we're going to be starting, hopefully, God willing, next Sunday with our New Testament names for God. But um, it just says here that after 70 years as captive, so 70 years of being um, in Babylon, the people from the southern kingdom of Judah were allowed to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Later, they rebuilt the city walls too. And when the right time came, God would keep his promise to send someone to make everything right again. Do you remember, boys and girls, way, way back at the start when we learned about Abraham and the promises that God made to Abraham? And one of them was that through Abraham's family, the whole world would be blessed. God had promised a saviour and a rescuer. And that rescuer came and it came into the line of Abraham's family. I shouldn't say I should say he. He came into the line of Abraham's family and he was, of course, Jesus. And Jesus came and he rescued the world by dying for our sins. And if we put our trust in him, we can become part of God's family forever. Isn't that amazing? So I've got another wee verse here just to finish off. And I think this will be our memory verse challenge for the week. It says here, Lord, you are my shield. You are my wonderful God who gives me courage. Psalm 3 verse Three. So we're going to put this on our page tomorrow and, and this will be hopefully your chance to learn our memory verse for the week, remembering that God is indeed our shield. Thank you for listening this morning, boys and girls. We're going to finish off with one of our favourite King's Kids songs where we talk about God being our shield. And it is, of course, never be shaken. So we trust that God is our strength and our shield. And so nothing will ever um, be able to shake us because our faith is on a firm foundation and that is in our mighty, wonderful, loving God. So God bless you all and we will chat to you again, God willing, next Sunday morning. Bye.